What's up, makers? April Dunham here. So the 20th anniversary of Microsoft SharePoint is coming up in just a few days, so I thought I would do a SharePoint related video today. There's some brand new functionality for SharePoint list formatting that enables us to customize our group headers. This has been a long requested and long awaited addition to SharePoint list formatting, so I'll break it down for you and show you how to use it in your SharePoint list. Stick around after this and I'll show you how it's done. I've did a few videos now on SharePoint list formatting, but I'll do a quick recap for those of you who might be new to it. SharePoint list formatting gives us a way to transform the look and interaction with our SharePoint list. So we can take things like say a status field and apply some color coding to that based off of what the status is. We can inject icons. We can even inject some interactive abilities like being able to click on this mail icon and have that open up an email. And this is done behind the scenes using something called JSON, which if you don't know what that is, I do have another video walking through what JSON is and how to use it, which I'll have a link to that you can watch. But really all you need to know is how to copy and paste to get started with some of these samples. There are a ton of samples out on the patterns and practices GitHub repo for list formatting, and they're broken out into a few different categories. We can apply this type of formatting either on individual columns, kind of like what we're seeing here, but we can even apply this formatting on an entire view to make a SharePoint list not even look like a SharePoint list. So you would click into the folder of the type of sample that you're wanting to use. So if it is a view sample, we would go into that folder. Then we can browse through all the different types of formatting samples that we have. Uh, take this planner inspired card, which is actually one that I created. So this is an example of how we can apply this formatting on an entire view so that it doesn't even look like a SharePoint list. We can apply some HTML, CSS stuff with that JSON so that it really transforms and makes the look and feel look more like a boxed layout instead. What is new though, and what this video is all about, is now we have the ability to apply this same type of formatting to our group headers. This was something that wasn't available to us until just recently. So where does this come into play? Now for these demos today that I'll be showing, I'm going to be focusing on the Asset Manager Microsoft List template. So taking a step back, let's talk about SharePoint List versus Microsoft List. They are actually one in the same. So when I say that we can use this formatting on SharePoint list, this same type of capability is also available in our Microsoft list, which is what this asset manager template is. It's a Microsoft list template that we can use. And if we look at this, you'll notice that we actually already have some SharePoint list formatting embedded in these templates. We're using this in the status and in the manufacturer fields so that we can color code the values there based off of what it is whether it's available and whether the manufacturer is Microsoft, Contoso, so on and so forth. Now, how do we apply this though to our group headers? Now to demonstrate that within this asset manager list template, we actually have a few views available to us. So if I click on the all items drop down in the upper right hand corner, we see that we have a grouped by asset type view. So let's take a look at that and let's see what groups look like within SharePoint list natively without any formatting applied. So when you do apply a grouping to a particular column, it's going to automatically pull in the name of the column. So in this case, I am grouping by asset type, separates that with a colon, and then it's going to put in the name of the items that you're grouping by. So these are accessories, and it's going to show within parentheses how many items match that particular group. So I have one accessory, three laptops, two printers, and one smartphone in this particular list. So before we had this new functionality, we really had no control over what this looked like. Maybe we didn't want to have the asset type header in there. That's a really common request. Maybe we only wanted to pull in the name of the grouping, like the accessory, the laptop, and the, the amount. We don't want to have that header in there also. That's something that we can use this new SharePoint list formatting capabilities to do. So let's start with a simple example. Now, as I said, this is all done utilizing JSON. I will have this sample on my GitHub so you can just copy and paste this into your asset manager list or whatever SharePoint list you're wanting to use it in so you don't have to worry about rewriting this from scratch. There are a couple key things in the formatting that I want to point out that enable this new functionality. So there are properties that you want to define. A one new property we have is called group props. This is where we can get the properties of a grouping in our SharePoint list. 
Another thing you'll notice here is we have a header formatter. So this is going to format the header of the group that we have. That's where we're going to put in any type of formatting that we want to customize that group header. So you'll have your groups property, then you'll have your header formatter with your styling in that. You might notice this item up here, hide a footer that I have set to true. So one of the functionalities that we have with SharePoint lists is the ability to do some summation and totals on our list so that we can say, take a count of how many items are in a particular list or a sum or an average. When we have that enabled, that enables a footer within your list. So you need to choose when you're doing these type of group formattings, whether you want to show or hide the footer, because we can actually apply some formatting on the footer as well, which we'll get to here in a little bit. So those are the main properties that we need to be concerned of. I'm going to actually apply this formatting because I want you to see what it looks like so that everything that's going on here will make sense. So I'm just going to copy this entire block of JSON and we're going to go back to our SharePoint list in that view that is grouped by asset type. And to apply this, we're going to click on that view icon in the upper right hand corner and we're going to scroll down and you'll see at the very bottom an option to format current view. So when we select that, it's going to open up a panel on the right hand side. And we have some out of the box, what we call custom formatting options that we can actually do on these lists to customize the views. Doing things like maybe shading every other row, so alternative row formatting or some conditional formatting to shade an entire row. But what we're wanting to do here is apply some more advanced formatting. So what we're gonna do is at the bottom left-hand corner, click on that link that says advanced mode and you'll see that we get a panel pop up with a text box that we can paste in that JSON block. So I'm going to just remove what is in there currently and replace it with what I have copied over from that file. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click Save and that will apply my formatting so that everyone who sees this list now sees my new formatting. Now on our group headers, we no longer have the asset tag, colon, then the actual name. I got rid of that because that's really repetitive and unnecessary. And I've did a few things. I've injected an icon based off of the different type of asset. I have the number of assets that are in there and then I'm pulling in the asset category. And then you'll notice that I'm also doing some color coding based off of the asset type here. So this really helps transform the look and feel of your views that have grouping applied to them and give you more custom ability as far as what is shown here in the group header. Pretty cool. So now that we see what this actually looks like in use here, and you see it works when I collapse the items here, the formatting stays. And another thing that I wanted to point out as well is we can mix and match. So we have formatting applied now to customize the group header on the view, but we also still have the formatting applied to these individual columns as well. So we can have both working at the same time. Now that we see what this actually looks like, let's go back to that JSON sample and I'll point out a few things of how this actually works in the back end. So first thing we have is a div where I'm pulling in that icon. Now one of the things that I'm using to get those icons is I'm just using something called the Office Fabric. So I'll put a link to this in the video notes, but if you go to uifabriciconsazurewebsites.net, this is a repository of all kinds of different icons that we can easily use in our SharePoint list formatting. All these icons have a friendly name. So if I right click on any of these icons, you see we can copy the friendly name. That's all that we need to be able to use these icons in our SharePoint list formatting. So I just did a search for a laptop, for example, so that I can have an icon to use in my laptop section. And I selected this one and I right clicked and I copy the friendly name. Now, once I have that back in my JSON and the SharePoint list formatting, you see that in this span, I have an if statement. So I'm getting the different asset types. And so if it's accessory, for example, I'm showing an icon called coffee script. And if it is a laptop, I'm showing an icon called laptop selected. Now, how are we determining what the group name is to define this? So how do I know if this is accessory or if this is a laptop? Well, we have this property here called group.fielddata. So this is a new property again that we can use to, for the current group, get what the data is for that group. So that's how I can use that. I can say if group.fielddata equals accessory, 
then apply this class or this color for the background or apply this icon to it. So that's really all I'm doing. So for each one, I'm mapping that and saying show this color if it's this and then this icon if it's that type of asset. Now the only other two things to this is I'm getting the count of items for that group and then the group name. So all I've did for that is we have another div and we're using another new function called at group.count. That's what gives us the count of the number of items in that particular group you're in. And then we have at group.fielddata.display value to get the actual display name of the group that we're in. And that's what I'm doing here in the final div. So that is a simple example of how to customize these group headers. Now let's take a look at how we can customize those footers like I was talking about. So where does this come into play? What if you want to do, say, a sum of the purchase price for every asset within these categories? It might be useful to know. We can use the SharePoint view totaling functionality for that. So first step to applying the formatting is you want to add those totals to your view. So in my grouped by asset type view here, I'm going to select the dropdown and I'm going to go to edit current view. This will take me to the old school edit screen. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, we'll see some additional sections here, one of them being totals. So we're going to expand out that total section. And this is where we can see it's going to take some of the columns that we have in this particular list. And it's going to give us the ability for each one to do certain things. So if I click on this drop down next to purchase price, which is the one I'm wanting to do this totaling on, I can see I can either get a count, I can get averages, maximum, minimums, sums, standard deviations, and variances. So for my case, I want to get the sum of the purchase price of all items in a category. So I'm just going to select this option from the drop down for my purchase price field. I'm just going to scroll down and click OK to apply that to my view. Now that's applied to my view and at the very bottom of our list, you see we have a sum of the purchase price of all the items here. So it's taking this $199, $1599, $1999 values, adding that all up and aggregating that and summing that for us here at the bottom. So that's the total sum, but what if we want to get the sum per each group? Now we have this list formatting applied and if you remember, if we go back to that JSON file, at the very top, we have this property called hide footer, and I set that to true. So that's why we're not seeing right now a sum of the purchase price broken out into each of the categories. If I want to see that, I'll need to change this value to false so that the footer is shown. So if I were to go in here, click on my group, go back to format view, and say remove this formatting for now, and click save, you'll see that the sum is added because we don't have anything restricting it from showing at the moment. So when you apply some type of total summation to your view, it's going to show what you chose here. So I chose sum, so that's what shows there. Or if you chose average, it would say average. And then it's going to show the value below. But what if we don't want it to show like that? Maybe we want this to say total value of assets and then have the number there. This is something that we can also customize now with SharePoint list formatting, and I'll show you how to do that next. So to demonstrate this, I'm using the exact same sample that we had before, and I'm just adding one thing at the end. You'll notice the first thing I changed was that hide footer option. I changed to false so that it will be shown. Everything else through here is the same, but if we scroll down to the bottom, you see I have added a section called footer formatter. So when you enable that totaling, it actually adds a footer into there for you. So we'll need to add this footer formatter section. And if we look below in the text content, I'm transforming what text shows there so that now it's going to say total value colon, and then it's going to pull in that value. And we pull in that value with this shortcut that's new, which is called column aggregate dot value. So that's going to get the aggregation there of all the sum of the different purchase prices for the various items in the groups. So let's copy this again and let's see how this transforms our list. So I'm going to go back here into my format view. We'll paste that in, click save. And now you see we have our group headers along with in our aggregate there, it says total value colon with the value there instead of that standard formatting with the sum. One last thing before I let you go here that I want to show is we also have the ability below to customize this total sum in the footer. 
So that's what I'm showing here in this sample. So again, just building on the other samples that we've looked at. Now, if we scroll down to the footer formatter, what we're going to do to customize that section is use a property called custom card props. Because what we're actually gonna do is we're going to have that change to say view details. And when we hover over that, have a custom card pop up that shows some additional details there. So let me just copy this and paste it in so that you can see what this looks like again. So we're gonna go back to format current view, paste that in, click save. And you see what happened below, that total went away. Now I have an option to view details. And when I hover over that, it's telling me now a custom message that the sum of the purchase price is and then the value. So that's about it for this new functionality to customize our grouped views here. If you come up with any cool looking grouped views, drop me a note in the comments of this video or shoot me a tweet on Twitter and let me know. The three different samples that I've shown you today are available on my GitHub, which I'll include a link to in the video notes. If you found this helpful, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next video.